Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I am back with another math video for you guys. Today, you are getting two for one. I'm going to include concepts from lessons 6.3 and 6.4 in the same video because I think they can be com combined quite nicely. So in lesson 6.2, we were dealing with division, talking about equal groups, and in that lesson, we knew how many equal groups we needed to have, but we just didn't know how many items were going to be in each of those equal groups. In lesson 6.3, we don't know how many equal groups we're gonna have. We just know that we have X number of items and that we want them to be divided up equally, but we don't know how many equal groups that's going to create when we go through the process of dividing them equally. We will be told how big our groups have to be and we will use that information about how big our groups have to be to determine, well, how many equal groups can I create given the size of the groups that I've been told that they have to be. So I'm gonna set up the whiteboard with some examples, give you those so that you can kind of see how we need to work these problems out. And then at the very end of that, I'll come back with some closing thoughts for you guys. All right, let's look at our first example in this lesson. I have moved away from my obsession with cupcakes and cookies, and now I'm looking at uh, 24 stickers. Now, what's different about these problems in this lesson is that you are told how many items you have, so I know that I have 24 stickers, but all I know is that I want those 24 stickers to be arranged with eight stickers on one piece of paper. So I don't know how many equal groups or how many pieces of paper I will need if I'm saying, well, I wanna take my 24 stickers and make sure that I have eight stickers on a page. So I've already drawn out my counters to represent my stickers. There's 24 of them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create groups of eight as many times as I can. And it has to be exactly eight. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to box those in, and that's going to be group one. I'm going to keep going because I have stickers left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm going to box those in. That's going to be my second group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I have my third third group here. So the groups you should recognize then represent the number of pages that I need. So looking at my model, if I said, okay, I have 24 stickers and I want eight stickers on a page and I'm asking myself, well, how many pieces of paper do I need to make that happen? The answer to that would be I would need one, two, three pieces of paper. Okay. By just looking at my model. Now, if I wanted to represent what happened in this model using the bar model, I can also represent that pretty easily. So let me move this out of the way. So I know that I have 24 stickers, I wanted eight on a page, so that means I needed three pages. So in the bar model, remember, your diagram goes across, and this whole bar represents all of your stickers. So this whole bar represents a total of 24. Okay. And we just found out that in order to put eight stickers on a page, I would need a total of three pieces of paper. So I'm going to separate my bar model into thirds or into three equal pieces, telling myself that I would have eight stickers there, eight stickers there, and eight stickers there. And that would be how you would visually represent it using a bar model. Here in our second example, I am looking at 15 seashells and I want to put five shells in a box, but I don't know how many box I'm going to need in order to make that happen. So I've already drawn out my counters to represent my 15 shells and I've already drawn out my bar model to say that this whole bar right now represents 15 and I'm going to be looking at dividing that by creating equal groups of five shells a piece. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did in the previous example. I'm going to circle as many groups of five as I can. So here is one, two, three, four, five is right here. So that's going to be my first group. One, two, three, four, five. This will be my second group. And then one, two, three, four, five. That is my third group. 
So I have one, two, three groups, which then tells me for the purpose of this problem that I would need three boxes so that I could put five shells in each. Now, if I wanted to represent that on my bar model, that tells me, okay, I'm gonna need to divide my bar into three separate pieces. So that's one, two, and three. And each of those pieces would contain a total of five shells. And that's how I would represent it on the bar model. Now the last little piece of this lesson I'm gonna show you is to make sure that we understand the different parts of a division problem so that we know how to set it up correctly and we know how to read a division problem when we see it. Now the last little part of this video that I wanna show you guys is just how to label and read a division problem. So right now we have the division problem 24 divided by eight is equal to three. So we wanna make sure that 24 is the number that is being divided and that is called our dividend. Eight is the divisor, that is the number that is doing the dividing and that is called the divisor. And three is the answer to the division problem and when we're dealing with division, the answers are called quotients. So the dividend is divided by the divisor and that gives you the quotient. And you would read this as 24 divided by eight and your quotient would be three. Now sometimes you'll see a division problem written differently and they will make use of what is called a division house. So this little thing right here, that is called your division house. The dividend goes inside of the division house the divisor goes outside of the division house and the quotient goes on top of the division house. So again, the number in the division house is called the dividend. The number outside the division house is called the divisor. And I used to tell my fifth graders, think about it like this. If this is called a division house, this is the divisor or the worker knocking on the door saying, let me in, I have work to do. And then the answer is on the top and that is called the quotient. So the same thing, this will be read, read as 15 divided by five and that is equal to three. So three is your quotient. So those are your examples. That's how you read a division problem. I'm coming right back in a second with my closing thoughts. So those are your examples for lessons 6.3 and 6.4. Lesson 6.4 strictly talks about using the bar model and how the bar model represents what you did when you created those equal groups based on the size of the groups you were told you had to have. So it was just a visual, another way to visually look at what we were doing when we were going through and dividing those problems. The other thing that we wanna make sure is that even though in this particular lesson, we didn't know how many groups we had, we are still dealing with the concept concept of sharing in this type of division problem. So we're still looking at sharing, making sure that we have those equal groups and making sure that no one group is bigger than the other group. The last thing that I wanted to share with you guys in those examples is just making sure that we understand the parts of a division problem. The quotient is always the answer to the division problem. The dividend is the number that is being divided and the divisor is the number that is doing the work. When I taught fifth grade, I told my students to remember that the divisor is the worker because that is the one that's actually dividing the number or the dividend as I should say, using my math terms. So with that, that is all that I have for this particular video. If it was helpful, if it got you through your homework tonight, please give it a thumbs up, and I will be sure to see you guys in the very next video. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Bye.